guys so welcome back thanks for clicking so this Italian Catholic sister finally reviews our reverse story told us the secret behind our converting to Islam so let's check it out I was born and raised in Italy, so I grew up in a Catholic environment and I went to Catholic schools since I was three years. But when I was around 12, 13, I totally rejected this religion because I noticed it that there are a bunch of hypocrites and liars. And so I started thinking that all the religious people are like them. But I was still a believer. So when I was 18, my father committed suicide and my mother started drinking. So I was very young and completely lost and alone. At that time, I used to be very upset with God because I believed that there was God, but I didn't understand why I had to go through so much pain and loneliness. Now, after so many years, I realized that that pain was a gift because I changed completely inside of me. I became a different person. I had the chance to travel and I felt in love with the Middle East. And especially, I found myself crying when I heard the, the call to prayer. And the weird thing is that in my culture, when you try to talk about something spiritual, people mocking you and they don't understand you because here, People used to be very rational. So when I tried to explain my feelings, everyone around me was like, oh, this is cultural appropriation. This is, this is wrong. That one is not your environment. And I felt in some way guilty or wrong. Because of the love I felt with the Middle East, I was involved in the Palestinian issues. And all of my Italian friends didn't understand why I had that fire in my heart, why I felt their problems like my problems. And I didn't have an answer. It was just like this, Kalas. I just was following my, my feelings. And at that time, I lived my, in my own world. I used to pray to my own God. I've been an activist for Palestine in my own way. That was basically to be in contact with people both in the West Bank and Gaza, but especially in Gaza. I just tried to give them help in every possible way. Until in 2014, I met on internet a girl and it was an instant connection. We both don't have, and um, we don't know how to explain this, this feeling we felt. She is just like the sister I never had. So since that moment, I changed again. I was more strong, more focused. I started asking to the, all the NGOs, all the association, because my goal was to go to Gaza, because I promised to my sister, we will meet, I promise you. But every time I was asking, the answer was no. Working hard and struggling to get that permission, I went to the West Bank and I, I was in a, in, a, in a group of international activists, I had a course, I did a lot of things. And then one day, I finally had the chance to get inside Al-Aqsa and it was during the prayer time. And I was not Muslim at that time, but a friend, a dear friend, manage in some way with the security we we were able to get inside i was in the middle of hundreds of women praying and i was shaken because my mind was completely closed i i was in my mind i was scared but my heart was melting it was too much. It was a sign, a very clear sign, but it was still not the right time for me. In 2021, that was after the war, um, I launched a project, a mental health project for children and families in the Gaza Strip. It was like a miracle. I finally found an NGO. I found a group of 
psychologists from Milano and we made this project and I worked for them two years as a volunteer and finally I got my permission and I was able to go to Gaza. In Gaza I felt like home. Not only my friends, all the people that I met through internet during the years, and of course they were a family, and uh, but all the strangers in the street, they used to stop me and talk to me and hug me and take a picture. I never, never felt so loved in my entire life. And of course, I finally met my sister and that was one of the best moments of my entire life. It was like an atomic bomb inside of my heart. The second day I was there, we decided to go to the beach because it was one of my biggest dreams. And I have to say that in the previous years, I used to have a dream in the night and I used to dream a beach in the sunset. And it did, that dream came many times in my mind. And at a certain point, I convinced myself, okay, that beach is the entrance entrance to the afterlife and when I will die I will go there and I will meet my father there. I was so wrong. So when we arrived at the beach a group of boys riding horses surrounded us so I was distracted and we kept walking for a little surrounded by the horses. It was very nice and then finally I was looking in front of me and I saw exactly the beach of my dreams. Same sunset, same colors, same direction. And that moment, I don't know how to explain it through words. It was like I realized that I was broken for all of my life. But in that moment, like a puzzle, all the pieces went into their right places inside of me. I was shocked and I said, Allah loves me. And I was surprised even to think this. I never used to think that God should love me. Why me? So I look at my sister. It was like a dream. She was surrounded by the light of the sunset. She was smiling and she said to me, yes, Allah loves you. I know that this should sound stupid to a lot of people. It was a beautiful moment, a sunset on the sea with a beautiful person. But it was deep inside of me because I realized this is a sign. And you had a lot of signs during your life. I felt this is the last one. This is my wake up call. And I just wanted in that moment to, to fall on my knees and cry and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Two days later, I asked my sister to teach me the prayer because I felt inside of me the need to say thank you. Thank you for all the things that you gave to me. Thank you for this amazing, incredible life. Thank you. Thank you forever, for eternity. Thank you. Thank you. At the same time, being in Gaza, sometimes it's scary. I heard bombs one night and you are forced to think about death. And for the first time in my life in Gaza, I also realized that I was scared about death. I never used to think about, I, I was like, oh, the day I will have to die, it's okay. I will face that moment naturally. I was very arrogant. But in Gaza, I realized, no, 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 I'm scared. So when I had to left and go back home, it was very painful. And I, and I started thinking to so many things, God, religion, afterlife, death, so many things. And when I, when I arrived at home, I was deeply depressed. I spent days staring at the wall feeling and I don't know, a sort of hole inside of me. I was empty. Then one day I said to myself, I, I reacted. Suddenly I re reacted and I said, okay, I have to pray. I have to read the Quran. And so I did it. But my mind, 
<laughs> my mind was still saying me, no, 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 you cannot do this. No, 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 no. These are all ancient stories for fools. Uh, this is not the right way for you. How can I pray five times a day and watch myself five times a day? No, no, I don't want a timetable to talk to God. I can talk to God anytime. I was still arrogant. Reading the Quran, page after page, something stronger than my dark mind came up. And I found myself crying on the pages. And I was surprised and shocked, like, I was a Muslim for my entire life. This is, this is the God that was in my mind. So merciful, so full of love, so kind, so gentle, so powerful. And I, I was like, I was a Muslim for my entire life and I didn't know. I sent a message to a dear Italian Palestinian friend and I said to her, I want to convert to Islam. And she was so excited. She called all of her friends and sisters that I already knew. And they, they managed a perfect day for me. It was the 12th of May. I, I traveled and I went to their cities. It was great. They gave me a lot of gift. They were crying with me. And I took my Shahada. Of course, I sent the video of my Shahada to all of my friends in Gaza and to my sister. And one of them shared the video on Instagram and suddenly I had tons of messages from strangers in Gaza. They were like, Mabruk, Mabruk, welcome sister. We are so joyful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Gaza saved my life. My sister saved my life. God gave me Palestine and especially Gaza and especially my sister to make me understand that was the only possible way for me that I had so a deep, dark head and that I was scared of so many things about religion. And, and so God found a different path to bring me there. And I'm so thankful, so thankful. Alhamdulillah forever and Alhamdulillah for giving me Gaza and my sister. I was scared to, to tell my story on, on the internet because I know how it works in Italy. I know that people usually don't like me here. And I know that the fact that now I am a Muslim will scare a lot of, of them. And my daughter begged me Mama, do this. You have nothing to be afraid. You have to be proud of your journey. You have to share your journey to the people because it's amazing. And I have to say that two months ago, my daughter, she's only 12. She was watching me doing the prayer. I never said to her, you have to, you have to. She was watching me. And when I finished, she said, Mama, I want to learn. Subhanallah. Wow, that was a beautiful story, guys. I love how it all started. I love how she was being moved to actually go to the box with her friend to join the prayer. Like, you can notice that, you know, her heart was already drawing closer to Islam before she actually take the bold step to, you know, go to the box to pray. And that was beautiful to watch. I love the fact that she spoke about, you know, like you could see the joy that comes with her giving this, you know, this converse story. Our story is making me kind of emotional because of what is actually happening now in Gaza, in Palestine. In that period, there was even some kind of, you know, war and war ended then, you know. I'm sure she, this, this story was taken some few years back and now you can see what's going on now. Oh, wow, I just hope she's fine, she's doing well. I hope she's not actually in that, you know. I hope wherever she is, she's doing fine. That was a beautiful story. I really enjoyed watching. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.